Aloha friends, family. Welcome to the channel. It's not only erroneous to think that you could die. <clears throat> but it's not even possible. Now again, are you seeing yourself as a mortal human? Or are you seeing yourself as one with first cause? Which is consciousness. In a nutshell, we could just sum all of first cause up into consciousness. Consciousness does not create illusions so if consciousness doesn't create illusions <clears throat> where where do the illusions come from and what are the illusions and we could say for those that co-create illusions their reality their whole entire reality is illusion <clears throat> illusions die illusions fade away so if a, if, if a human found himself living as an illusion in an illusion then he would be convinced that he and everyone else was going to die and he would be right about that because illusions die but if he <clears throat> had stepped into the real had become the real had recognized his oneness with first cause, then he would immediately also realize it's impossible for him to die. Because what first cause is doing is eternal. Consciousness is eternal. If I am part of that consciousness, if you are part of that consciousness, you are eternal. Because God does not die and God does not co-create death. So depending on where we are, mentally, spiritually, physically, and which reality we reside in, we say that there are two realities. There's really only one reality. Again, we're dealing with reality and illusion. But when you're in the illusion and of the illusion, you feel like and believe that that illusion is just as real as the real. And you will project that onto everything around you. And so if you sense within yourself, yes, I am going to die at some point, you're going to project that onto everyone and everything else, and you're going to assume 
that it works the same for everybody as it works for you. But again, you are the illusion. You have not become the real. So when we talk about going to heaven or going to Eden or going anywhere, it's really more whatever that whatever wherever that is is coming to you it's coming to you because again all things come through us so if you were to find yourself in eden that would have to be coming through you to then manifest for you to say i am in it If you were going to go to hell, you would have to manifest hell through yourself, find yourself in what you consider to be hell, feel like is hell, believe is hell. And then you would think, I have, I have gone to hell. But see, you didn't go anywhere. It came through you. It comes through us. So rejoice, my friends, knowing that nothing eternal <clears throat> goes to hell or manifests hell or manifests or goes or experiences any of that stuff, any of the illusion. Again, it's all an illusion out there. The matrix and all of its troubles and problems, we could say that is a hell of a sort, right? That's a type of hell. All right, what does it have to do with you? If you're in the real, if you've become the real, or if you're transitioning, because there is, you know, a millisecond of space that you occupy between manifesting and being an illusion and manifesting and being the real. So that threshold. <clears throat> and, you know, maybe you're, you haven't stabilized your frequency and so maybe you find yourself in the illusion sometimes and in the real sometimes. And maybe you don't even know that that's happening or realize that is what's happening. <clears throat> that's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's why your feelings can change so quickly. You're feeling great one moment because you've entered the real. And then you feel like shit the next day and you don't quite understand why. Because you've gone back into the illusion and the illusion does not feel like the real It is not blissful like the real. So stay here in the real, stabilize your frequency, reaffirm that first cause has no opposition, therefore you have no opposition because you are one with first cause. If you want to leave that knowing and go into the matrix to battle and fight, that's your choice. And it's not right or wrong. It's not good or evil. You're here for your experience. And if part of your experience is, I need to leave the real to go into the illusion to do some sort of fighting. 
And I think you might could say, we might could say that all of us, in fact, did do that. All the co-creators that are the real. Journeyed into the illusion for whatever reasons, hopefully to, well, not even hopefully, to battle, you know, to experience acting and co-creating as though there is some sort of opposition. You know, fighting when there's nothing to fight. But in the illusion, you see so many things that should be fought. But see, the whole illusion dies when you become the real. So then there's nothing to fight. So if, if fight is what you want deep down within yourself, then you're probably going to be in the illusion or visit it frequently so that you can exercise that fight but all is one so all is self and you're fighting with yourself anytime you're ever fighting with supposed uh you know someone else or some enemy you're fighting with yourself can you see that can you acknowledge that and see, if you, if you really have some kind of, you know, evidence, you would say, uh, no, I have a real enemy. I've got this real problem. I mean, here's all the evidence. Here's the story. Here's the narrative on the whole thing. So what, you're going to deny that and, and say you don't believe? I'm going to say I don't believe in the illusion. But I'm going to say to one that is in the illusion co-creating that, yeah, you seemingly have a real enemy. Seemingly. Again, from within the illusion. Step out of the illusion, all of that becomes resolved, and you see that you don't have any enemy, and you were, in fact, fighting yourself. You may not be ready for that. You may not be ready to acknowledge that. Or you know people, let's say. You know people, because I do. I know people that are not ready to acknowledge that. They would not be ready to admit that. Which binds them to that illusion. And that illusion is, is their self, you know. They say, me. I am me. And when they're saying I am me, they're saying I am that illusion, this illusion. And so everything they do relates to that. Every Everything they do comes from that. And again, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm not here to judge. I'm not the judge. Except over this portion of first cause. And I'm not even judging over this because this can't be in discord with what is first cause. There is no opposition to first cause. There's only illusion of opposition to first cause. So we could then think of it in terms of everything that you see that appears to be contrary to first cause is a cue. There it is. There's a little cue. There, there, there is a cue that's cueing you in to the bigger reality. See? Problem. Okay, that's your cue. To what? Uh, uh, what is it cueing me into? Solution. What is the solution? The solution is across the board, front to back, everything. So everything is solved in that sense. Everything is solved. Everything has been solved. There is no problem. 
because problems stand contrary to first cause. Does God have a problem? No. <laughs> Does God have uh, anything that's we could say is unresolved or an issue? No. <clears throat> anything that you can say about God, you should be saying about yourself if you've become the real. If you're still in the illusion, you'll be you'll you're trained you've been programmed so you will you will utter blasphemy he says that he is god blasphemy because they see god as a separate entity from themselves and so therefore they think no one can say that they're this entity that's separate from god me you know whatever because everything in their world has been separated it's an illusion all is one all is one. So it would actually be blasphemy to say that you're not God. <laughs> if there were such a thing as blasphemy, again, but there's not, because there's no opposition to first cause. So in the illusion, it's blasphemy to say you're God. From the real, it's, you know, ignorant. And ignorant is not good or bad, it is what it is. Ignorance is ignorance. It is just like uh, you know, wisdom is wisdom. It just is. So the whole thing was just recognition. That's it. You know, picture the Wizard of Oz. Picture the the castle crumbling and falling. And prior, just prior to that scene, you know, the curtain got pulled down. The illusion got ex exposed. And the minute the illusion is exposed, it crumbles down, leaving behind the real. See, the whole earth didn't crumble. The woods didn't crumble. The animals were not affected. It was the human perception that was affected. See, once you see it, once you know what it is, once you understand what it is, you can leave it. You can leave it behind. I don't have to keep going back to the illusion and and getting myself filthy and dirty and, and everything else and all the, you know, emotions that come with it and all the uh, wasted, expended energy lost, misused. Why do I want to do that? Why would I? I've become the real. <laughs> I don't have any interest in the uh, illusion, the matrix. Except, you know, maybe to just sh throw light on it. That's all. Throw light on it. Not from within it, from outside of it. And if you're in it, or if someone's in it, you know, they can catch a ray of that light. And hopefully realize that they're in it. And then, again, all you have to do is see it. That's it. Everything changes from your perception of it. You don't have to fight it once you realize you're in it. And once you realize you're... You're dead. See, the illusion is going to die. Is it dead now? Seemingly it's not, but again, something that's dead is always dead. Eternal life is always eternal life. So if you're going to die, you're already dead. You just don't realize it yet. You don't see it from, you know, you're not seeing it because you're in it. You're in death. From within death, you and you're walking around and talking, you feel like you're alive. You say, no, I'm alive. Look. I can do this and this and this. A dead person couldn't do that. Yeah, dead people are doing all kinds of stuff in the illusion. All kinds of stuff. They're living out their full lives in it. And how do I know it's an illusion? Because it dies. The eternal does not die.
Oops. So let's apply that to the vaccine story. The vaccine, they're trying to kill you. They're trying to do this. They're trying to do it again. They can only do anything to the illusion. I'm not saying go take the vaccine, but I'm also saying know that the vaccine can do nothing to you. Nothing to you. To you who? To you the real. Nor can the chemtrails... Nor can the stuff they're doing to the food. Nothing they do to and in the illusion has any effect on you if you have become the real. Oh, he's smoking. How could he do that? He's, he's the, the temple, the body. Uh, I am... One with first cause. I'm eternal. And nothing can have any negative adverse effects on me. Nothing. Nothing. Now if I start believing your belief, it, could that affect me? Yeah, that could. I'm not going to do it though. I've got a very strong mind. It was strong before, but now it's real strong. <laughs> Real strong. And that's that's not boasting. Because is God's mind strong? Well, God doesn't even have a mind. Well, if he went into human form and he did, would it be strong or would it be weak? Was Jesus' mind strong? Well, but Jesus didn't smoke. I think he drank some wine. And I think he might have done more than you even know he did. And if he had a smoked, would that have invalidated his realness? His oneness with first cause? See, so you're still playing the judge. You're still judging. And see, I could play that very same judge myself to myself. And would that be beneficial in any way? No. Do I smoke three cartons of cigarettes a day? No, I do not. So we hearken back to the good book when it says all things in moderation. So quit being so judgmental and worrying about everybody else's outcome. You're free. You're free. See, if you have any thoughts contrary to you are free, you're struggling with the illusion. Because in the illusion, the, whatever's in the illusion is not free, right? We know that. It's bound. What's it bound by? All kinds of things. What's the main thing it's bound by? Death. That's the main thing, again, because they're already dead. They just don't know it. And until they acknowledge it, they won't become alive because they cannot enter the real until they realize they're in the illusion. They are the... They're not in it. They are it. Again, the outside comes from within. So if you are in an illusion, that illusion came through you. So you are not only in it, you're of it. You are it. You're 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 creating it.
See, NPCs have just as much creative uh, force happening as, as we do. They have just as much access, not even access. Again, this happens through us. It's automatic. You don't have a choice about it. Reality manifests and you have an experience and you say, I am me because you're conscious. Okay, that you have no choice about that. You're conscious. But you're either conscious of yourself within an illusion of your own making or you're conscious of yourself within the real of your own making. And since you know so many people that are in the illusion... It's easy for you to be uh, bugged out by it because it's constantly, let us say, in your face. So you may have to abandon everything and everyone in order to get the clarity you need to get your uh, self stabilized in the real, get your vibration high enough to stabilize you in the real here in Eden. And you can do it. And they can do it. Even they. They being those in the illusion. They can do it. You, it it's so simple. I mean, the whole damn thing will drop away just like the uh, yeah, the metaphor of Oz, you know, the curtain gets yanked back, the exposure happens, the whole damn thing crumbles down, and you are immediately and instantaneously free to walk away from it and, and never think about it again. But if you're surrounded by people that are doing it day in and day out and they're in your face, you know, you're going to have a constant reminder. You're going to, and that's, maybe that's your battle. If you have a battle, that could be your battle. Your battle is to stabilize your frequency in the real, even though you're surrounded by the illusion and people of the illusion, NPCs. And that's a real battle. That's, <laughs> ask anybody doing it. I've done it. It was a real battle to me. It felt real. It felt, you know, all, everything you would experience with battle. It, it's all of that. And it's not very fun, really. I guess when you perceive that you win, you know, that's fun. But winning is not, I killed all the NPCs. Winning is the NPCs dissolved from my reality. They dissolved from my perception. They dissolved from my world. Is that possible? I don't know. Is it? Is that possible? I believe that it is. One of my few beliefs. I believe it's possible for the illusion to die because it's already dead there's nothing that opposes first cause <laughs> so you no matter how you come at this you win if we're to say win it's not really again an illusion you're not fighting an illusion you can't it's an illusion but for the human language mind barrier we say it as you win so no matter how you come at this, you win. If you're coming at it from the real. If you come at this truth, we could say truth. It's the truth. No matter how you come at the truth, it remains the truth. And anything contrary to that truth is false, is a lie, is an illusion. So is the world perfect? Yeah, it is. If you look at it from the truth, if you come from the truth, it's perfect. All right, so why are you fighting? Why are you judging? Why do you have hangups? Why are you 
toiling, spinning, and, and all that. Why? Well, you must be caught up with the illusion. You must be intermingled with the illusion. Or you might be fully immersed in it. Because the world is perfect. Why do I know that? Because God is perfect. Who manifested the world? God. Is God perfect? Yes. Is the world perfect? Yes. But there appears to be so much contrary information. Okay, appears. Illusion. Figure it out. Figure it out. You can figure it out. Is anything too difficult for God to figure out? Nope. Is God even struggling with anything? No. Okay, so it's already done then. Again, we're back to it. It's all resolved. You just need to bring your sight into that vision. Adjust your frequency. That's it. Simple. Seemingly simple. <clears throat> well, no, that's, I mean, it is simple. That's it. It is simple. That is the truth. That is the truth. Well, it feels and seems difficult. That's contrary to simple. So I must be it's within me then. There's something within me still. See, it always comes back to you, the perceiver. The world is perfect, but I perceive this, that, and the other. You're, then that's an error in your perception. Anything that you come up with that's contrary to first cause is part of that illusion. Why are you still? Why are we still? Why is anybody still wasting time and precious vital life force energy, currency, frequency on that damned old dirty illusion that's fading away with every second further? You can see it's falling apart. I mean, you know, that's all anybody wants to talk about these days. The illusion and how it's falling apart and how corrupt it is. Okay. Everybody needed to see that. You're not going to get out of the illusion again until you see that you're in it. And then it immediately could change. So I'm expecting and... Uh, just intuiting even that uh, many people are exiting with relatively little trouble, little effort. It's not some big hard thing to to get out of it. Because again, it's just a matter of recognition. So, love and light, friends and family, another beautiful, gorgeous morning in Eden. And, uh, I'm really looking forward to where we're headed, man. I think some re really amazing things happen for us when we stabilize into the real. <laughs>